Hello everyone, this is Sumerian, and in this tutorial I'll be dedicating it to the challenge this week, which is a multiplayer challenge. So this tutorial is going to be based on some multiplayer logic. Of course, there's a lot of things you can do with multiplayer, so I can't cover everything. What I am going to cover is, uh, in multiplayer, how to count how many players are in your challenge. Uh, if you've watched my Build a Race from Scratch tutorial, I have shown you that logic before. But we're actually going to add to it in this tutorial so that you uh, aren't just able to count how many players are in your challenge, but you're able to tell which players are in your challenge. I've just been working on a toy box for this challenge. Uh, I believe I'm going to call it Battle Arena X. And it was vitally important that I not only know how many players were in the challenge, but which players were in the challenge. And I'm going to show you how I set it up to have set up the game so that I knew which players were there and how many were there. So to start this tutorial, we are going to need a simple challenge maker. We're just going to plop our challenge maker down here. Maybe it was So what we need to do is first we need to put four locators somewhere that we want our players to spawn. We want them relatively in a tight group. Just like that. And I will put a trigger area that covers over all of them. Now, I want to attach my challenge maker to those four locators so that each player is assigned to one of those locators. So, when the game starts, all four of our players will be brought into this trigger area automatically because each of the players has a locator attached to them over there. Now what we need is we need four logic gates. And each of them is for one of the players. So we're going to space them a little bit apart. And we're going to have this one controlling player one, two, three, four. So with this trigger area, we have to say player one enters, we're going to send an input to the first logic gate. Player two will be the next, so on, so forth. There. So now each player entering that trigger area will send an input to one of these logic gates. Player one, two, three, four. Now we need four more logic gates here. And what we want to say is output, because all these logic gates are defaulted to open, the output is going to close that logic gate. And when these bottom logic gates close, we want to close this top logic gate. And the reason we're doing that is so that when player 1 appears in this trigger area, he will send an input to this gate, which will close this gate, and will close this gate in return. So now if player 1 exits this trigger area and comes back in, nothing will come out of this logic gate because we're not going to attach anything to input blocked. So it accepts player 1 coming in once, and then it closes itself down. And then what we need is we need a counter. We actually need three counters. One set to two. Next one set to three players. 
and the last one set to four players. So by default, the game will assume that it's one player unless these counters start to kick in, at which time we will know whether we have two, three, or four players. And also, because these gates have closed these gates, what we can do is if we need to know if player one is here, we send an input to this gate, and the input blocked will tell us player one is here, while if it, the signal comes out output, it tells us player one is not here. But we also have to make sure each of these gates, on the one time it outputs, it increments by one these three counters so that we can start counting how many players are actually in the game. Now remember, this gate will only fire once, so it's only possible for him to increment all three of these counters by one. And since the bottom one is set to two, unless we get a second player coming in and triggering one of these logic gates, none of these counters will reach target reached, so we will know we're at a one player game. And we have to do the increment from all of these logic gates to all of the counters. All of the top logic gates to all of the counters. There. So now all of these counters are being fed by any player entering that trigger area, but only once because these logic gates reclose themselves right away. So after that, we need a logic chain to be able to know, or for these counters to control. So how this logic chain is going to work is the, they are open by default, and we're going to use the input block to tie these logic gates to each other. So, by default, if nothing happens, these are all open, and therefore if we send an input into this first logic gate, because it's still open, the output will tell us we are at a one player game. Now if we hit two players, we want to say target reached, close this logic gate. So now the signal will go through the input block to the next logic gate. So right now, because it's still open, the output of this logic gate will tell us we have a two-player game. So when we reach three players, we want to close this logic gate. So again, the input comes in, out input blocked into the input of this one. Now it is closed, so it goes out the input blocked into the input of this one. So the output of this logic gate is telling us we are at a three-player game. And if we hit a four-player game, or four players, we want to close this last logic gate. Therefore, the input block of this logic gate will tell us we have a four-player game. So, right now we have it set up so that we know which players are playing the game by which of these gates are closed. So, if I send an input into this gate, if it comes out input blocked, I know player one is here comes out input blocked at this gate, I know player 2 is there, and so on and so forth. So here's what I'm going to do to test this system. I'm just going to put down a text creator, when I push a button in here, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to set up a button in here, and when I push it, we're going to attach it to our logic chain and then we'll have our logic chain tell us how many players are present. So I'll input to here. And I will output of our one player logic gate. Display text one. Output of our two player with display text two. Output of our three player will display text three. And the input block of our last one 
We'll display text four for if there are four players present. Now, I want a second button in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it when I press you, send an input to this gate. Now, I'm going to tie these gates together in a very odd looking way because no matter what happens, I want the input signal coming into this gate to hit all of these gates so I can tell from each and every one of them whether or not the input blocked signal will come out. So the way to do this is I'm going to tie the output to the input of this gate and I'm also going to tie the input blocked to the input of this gate. So that way no matter which state this gate is in the signal will travel through this gate to the next gate because I'm going to be testing each and every one of these gates to see which of them are closed so I want the signal to travel through no matter what state they're in. So I'm just going to put another text creator down over here. So I'm going to say, if this gate is closed, I want to display the text. Let's just see what happens if this one is closed and I display text 2. So I'm going to step on this challenge maker. Here I have peered in the trigger area, which should only fire once. So if I push this button, we're going to the bottom logic chain, which we attach to the text creator that's just going to say text one, two, three, four, depending on how many players are present. Text one. So it is a one player game. It is aware of that. And if I push this button, all I should see is player one pop up. there. Now we're going to test it by me throwing another player onto the base. Now what I'm doing right this second is I have to clear some logic here. I have to reopen a whole bunch of these logic gates just to make this work again. If you're making a challenge that's going to quit the toy box as soon as you're done. You don't have to worry about something like this. But if you want the challenge to be replayable, you have to remember to reset your logic. Which means you've got to reset all these logic gates, you've got to reset these logic gates, and you also have to very importantly clear these counters. So I'm going to set it up so that the top logic gates all open each other in series if they open. And I'm going to make these logic gates all open in series if they open. And I'm even going to set it so that the very first logic gate opening will clear the counters just so they don't have to push, press the button or attach the button to a whole bunch of things. This way, every time you start the game again, as long as you ensure that a game ended, which I probably should have done in the first place, a game ended, you open this one logic gate here, your game will reset itself, or at least this logic to count players will reset itself. And we'll do that, we'll hook it up so that next time, game ended, we'll open that logic gate, but for now, 
I'll just push this button, which should clear all that stuff for me. And I will place a second player. So here we are. We have two players on the base. And I'm just going to run the challenge really quickly so we can test the final logic. They've both spawned here in the trigger area. So now our logic should know that both player 1 and 2 are present and it should have correctly counted so that we have two players. Now it's going to look like I'm running around a little drunk here with the character because I play on a Wii U and I'm used to playing on the tablet so I usually play one player. Uh, to record this video my capture device has a bit of a delay and there you see it said text 2 so there are two players playing but my capture device has a bit of a delay so that's why I'm running around very strangely like this because I'm looking at a screen with a two and a half second delay trying to push buttons but here we're gonna push this button and it should tell us that player one is present and player two is present uh, it did it backwards because of the strange way we hooked up the logic but it did work so there we have successfully tested the logic so that is the multiplayer logic for counting players I hope this tutorial has helped and have yourselves a wonderful day.